Hey there, Terry Rubskin here. Yeah. Teddy Rubskin. Teddy Rubskin. Yeah. Teddy Rubskin. Hey there, Teddy Rubskin here, and today we're talking about the top ten worst movies of the year. Yeah, the absolute worst films of 2014. Yeah. Now I've actually been looking around online, comparing other people's lists of the worst movies of the year, and yeah, the internet's just full of them, right? There's so many lists, right? But, uh, honestly, I have to go to the community consensus. RottenTomatoes.com, right? Where they have all kinds of movies listed with uh, ratings based on everybody's opinions into a percentage, right? And, uh, this list is based on the absolute worst movies of the year. The movie's got the lowest fucking ratings on Rotten Tomatoes, you know? That, that's where this list comes from, right? Movies like Transcendence, which every, it's making everybody's list of the worst movies of the year. Didn't make my list, because it's only at 19%. That's right, movies on this list are much lower than that, right? Starting with number 10, Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return, which got like 16%. On the fucking Rotten Tomatoes. That's really fucking terrible. I can't believe it, Toto. We're really back in Oz. Oh, man. And the, 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 the animation looks terrible. The, the, this, this animated sequel to The Wizard of Oz. And Dorothy comes back to Oz and it, it looks really bad. I mean, animation looks worse than you might see on TV on a Saturday morning. You know what I'm saying? You will never forget. Are you okay? I do have a large piece of bark lodged in my... <gasps> bad voice performances. The whole thing looks pretty fucking terrible. Looks real bad. Number nine is a tie. Right? We got two movies. Nicolas Cage in Rage. And Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore in Blended, right? Yeah, Blended. Now, now actually, Rage with Nicolas Cage kind of looks like a movie I'd like to see, right? Because I like Nicolas Cage going crazy. But I have no interest in Blended whatsoever. Fuck that fucking movie, you know? I mean, Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore used to be interesting back in the day when they made The Wedding Singer and Fifty First Dates. But now, oh, I have no interest in seeing this fucking movie. Where they're obviously set up as a romantic couple, but, you know, initially they don't like each other. Or they hate each other. But somehow, they end up going on a vacation to Africa to get it, right? Along with their fucking kids, right? Adam Sandler's got nothing but daughters. And uh, Drew Barrymore boy's got nothing but fucking sons, right? So... Of course, of course, Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore are going to hook up. And of course, their fucking kids are going to hook up too, right? His daughters are going to hook up with her sons. They're going to end up fucking or something. I don't know. Fuck, this looks terrible. <laughs> but Rage with Nicolas Cage looks pretty good. But both of these movies got 14% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my god, that's so fucking bad. Well. Number eight is Winter's Tale, which really doesn't look at all like something I'd be interested in seeing at all. Uh, I mean, it's just some romantic fantasy movie with the uh, Colin Farrell. He falls in love with some chick, and then, you know, there's some time traveling and something involves because he ends up in, like, modern day, but he's got amnesia. But somehow he still remembers the girl, right? And, uh, well, I, I, no, no interest in seeing this movie at all. Especially since he's only got 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my god, so bad. Number seven is Walk of Shame. Starring that chick from Zack and Mary Make a Porno. Well, here she stars as a girl whose friends talk her into going out partying wearing a slutty dress, right? So they go out partying where she wears a slutty dress. And then something happens. She ends up getting separated from her friends. And then wandering the streets at night wearing a slutty dress getting mistaken for a prostitute. Right? Oh, yeah. 
Well, we can all relate to this story, right? I've been dead numerous times. <laughs> Ended up in a bad part of town wearing a slutty dress. Everybody thinks you're a prostitute. Oh, that's unfortunate. This movie's unfortunate, too, because it only got 12%. 12%? Oh, my God, that's terrible. Number six is Nut Job, <laughs> which is a movie about a fucking squirrel trying to steal some nuts. Uh... <laughs> You know, actually, he's got a whole bunch of rodents in there, and uh, some of them look really fucking familiar, like I've seen him in some other fucking movies. Like, is that Ratatouille? Is that Ratatouille? What? I forgot fucking... What? This looks really fucking generic. So fucking generic that it looks like a dozen or so other animated movies I've already fucking seen, you know? And the reviews for it were fucking terrible. It only got 10% with most people calling it. Fucking highly derivative and uninspired kids entertainment. And that's pretty much what it fucking looks like. Number five is another tie. With Grace of Monaco and Vampire Academy. Oh, both look really bad. But this Grace of Monaco movie, which has Nicole Kidman playing uh, Grace Kelly, who's like a real-life princess, you know, well, it seems kind of similar to a movie from last year, which had Naomi Watts playing Princess Diane. You know what I'm saying? Both of these movies are like A-list actresses playing real-life princesses that, ironically, both died in car wrecks. Isn't that weird? That's weird. And they're totally interchangeable, because I could just as easily see fucking Nicole Kidman play Princess Diane and see Naomi Watts playing Grace Kelly, you know what I'm saying? Kind of fucking interchangeable. It doesn't really matter, because uh, Grace and Monica only got 9% on Rotten Tomatoes, along with fucking Vampire Academy, which also got 9%. And Vampire Academy, whew, that looks really fucking bad. From the producers of Mean Girls? The producers of Mean Girls are making a vampire movie. Oh, yeah. Not the kind of vampire movie I want to fucking see. That's for fucking sure. Ugh. Number four is Addicted, which is a movie about this chick who's like uh, cheating on her husband. And she's like addicted to, just to, to cheating on her husband with these other guys and stuff. And uh, yeah, apparently nobody liked this movie at all. Got like fucking 8%. That's fucking terrible. Yeah, Addicted. It's a movie about fucking dead lady cheating on her husband. Number three is a tie with two movies, Legend of Hercules in 3D and I, Frankenstein, also in 3D. <laughs> and both of these movies got like 3% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's fucking terrible. I mean, what the hell? It's like nobody's ever tried to make movies out of Hercules or Frankenstein before. Come on, man. I mean, Frankenstein is one of the oldest fictional characters in the history of cinema, right? Going back to the silent era, fucking Thomas Edison made a fucking Frankenstein movie. And Hercules? There's been lots of Hercules movies, from Lou Ferrigno to fucking Disney's Hercules. Well, but this fucking Hercules, this is the legend of Hercules. Half God, all hero, all fucking crap. This movie looks fucking cheap. It's fucking dull. And it's fucking terrible. What the fuck? Man. I mean, I, mean, I Frankenstein, is a little bit more exciting, you know. There's more fucking special effects. There's more shit blowing up. But it's clearly made as a fucking... It's advertised as being from the producers of Underworld. So it's just like Underworld. Except it's overworld, because it involves, like, flying guys. You know, there's a secret battle between the fucking gargoyles and demons. Just like in Underworld, there was some secret battle between fucking werewolves and vampires, right? There's a war going on that humans don't know anything about. There's a war humans don't know about. It's been going on for centuries. Man, I mean, it's just like those Underworld movies. In fact, that guy... Hey, that guy, isn't that guy from fucking the Underworld movies? Isn't he? Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> I think they made this movie 
in the hopes of having like some kind of crossover between the underworld movies and I Frankenstein shit going on. You know what I'm saying? They could actually show up in the same movie. It'll be great. And in fact, Aaron Eckhart, he's not terrible in this fucking movie. I like him, you know. He was great as fucking Two Face in The Dark Knight, and he's pretty good here. Just doesn't give him a lot to work with. It's the movie itself that lets him down, because it's just a lot of fucking crazy, generic bullshit, right? Just like the Hercules movies, just generic bullshit. I mean, there was another fucking Hercules movie that came out this year starring The Rock that was better than this fucking Hercules movie. <sighs> Anyway, fucking number two is Left Behind with Nicolas Cage. We're his fucking second appearance on this fucking list. Oh, it's a fucking bad year for fucking Nicolas Cage, man. What the fuck, dude? Jesus. Although, although Rage does look like a movie I kind of fucking want to see. <laughs> Nicolas Cage going crazy or something. But Left Behind, I have no interest in seeing that movie at all. You know, old Nicholas Cage, he's playing like a, like a pilot, trying to land a plane during the rapture, which, uh, you know, some kind of biblical disaster movie is what the movie was advertised as, you know, but it uh, looks really fucking stupid. And I, I, I Left Behind it had been turned into a movie before with Kirk Cameron, right? Well, actually... Kirk Cameron's movie this year is at the number one spot, Saving Christmas, right? Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas got 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, 0%, that means that nobody gave it a good review. Is that even fucking possible? I don't fucking know, but uh, it, it's even in spite of Kirk Cameron going out there on social media trying to get people to give it a good fucking review. Telling people how much he loves Christmas. I love Christmas. And his whole fucking family loves Christmas. And my kids love Christmas. I mean, who doesn't love Christmas? Yeah, they, they fucking love Christmas. And anyone who loves Christmas should love his movie. Well, that's not necessarily true. I can fucking love Christmas. I don't have to fucking love your stupid fucking movie. You know? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely one of the worst fucking movies of the year. Worst reviewed fucking movie of the year with zero percent. That fucking almost never happens. I say almost never happens because another movie this year got zero percent. The ironically named Best Night Ever also got fucking zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes this year. Fucking zero percent? Yeah, this fucking chick flick or some fucking whatever with the found footage. Are these chicks running around Las Vegas getting drunk and acting fucking retarded? <laughs> like, I don't know who this is supposed to appeal to, really. Just running around and being fucking retarded. But this found footage is just cameras seeking around, making me sick. Looks awful. Oh, best night ever. Definitely not the fucking best night ever. Jesus Christ. Fuck. <sighs> So, there you go. That's the list of the fucking worst movies of the year. But uh, what do you guys think? Well, what do you think was the worst movies of the fucking year? You know? What did you really fucking hate at the movies? Because, I mean, this list is based on Rotten Tomatoes. Which, uh, they actually have two different numbers. One of the numbers is for the critics. And the other number is for the audiences, right? And the numbers there are usually a little bit higher, like with the Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Returns, like 72%. That's pretty good. That's pre pretty good, actually. And along with Grace of Monaco, also got like 71%. They want to see it. Want to see it? What do you mean, they didn't see it? This is based on people who haven't seen the movie yet? Is that what I'm getting? Hmm. I don't know, but uh, one of the worst reviewed movies was actually Rage, right, with Nicolas Cage. The audience reaction was down to 30%, which, wow, when it's that low on the audience reaction, then you know it's bad, but still, I don't fucking care. I mean, still, Rage with Nicolas Cage is the about the only movie on this list I kind of want to see, you know what I'm saying? Because it's Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I mean, why not?
Just how deep do you want this to go? How deep as hell? Anyway, till fucking next time, keep it real.